Days have gone since I first loved you Now I'm out here Wondering on my They are great, aren't they? Let's be honest. Good morning, I'm Shannon Meister. I am your guest speaker this morning and welcome to Broadway United Methodist Church. I'm not Alexis Johnson, which it says on your bulletin. She is our lead pastor, but she is off with family this weekend. One of the kiddos had a dance competition. So pray for them, because I think I'd much rather be up here than I would in, in Des Moines at a dance competition. <laughs> but, but welcome this morning. We have a lot going on at Broadway United Methodist Church, and we're just going to share a few of those things with you this morning. First of all, we are spring cleaning this Saturday. So come, um, we're going to be here from 9 to noon and 1 to 4. We're going to be moving things, we're going to be cleaning things, but the plan is to get us looking nice and fresh and spring clean for the Easter service. So we would love to have your help if you can come stay part of the day all day, whatever, come for as long or as little as you would like, and we will appreciate all the help, and we will find something for you to do. That won't be a problem, I'm sure. It's a big church with lots of rooms. And then next Friday, Friday, March 31st, is game night. This is game night 2.0 because we had one, and it was really, really successful. So we said, let's do another one. And I hear there's going to be, there's rumors that there's going to be an ice cream bar. So that's kind of what, the same game, same stuff we did last time, except different snacks. So even if you don't want to come play games, you might just want to come for the ice cream bar, and that's okay. No judgment here. That is from 7 to 9 in Fellowship Hall, and I don't think there's any RSVP needed or anything, right? You can just show up uh, free of charge. So that's fun. And then what's not on our show, oh, one more that I have. Uh, Holy Week and Easter schedule and resources are on the website. So check that out. There are all kinds of things that can prepare our hearts and our minds um, in this time of Lent as we prepare for Easter. And then one that's not up there is the Kids Against Hunger event that we did last Wednesday. And we can share it during our offering time, but I just wanted to share for you all. 
We did an event Wednesday night. We packed 5,000 meals in a little bit less than an hour, which was awesome. We had a lot of our Wednesday night group. We had a lot of other volunteers come, I think around 50 of us. But around 50 of us packed 5,000 meals in like 45 minutes. And the guy had told us, yeah, yeah, we're going to be fine. We can do that many. And I said, in an hour? Are you sure? I don't, I don't know that we're that good. Oh, no, I've been doing this for years. I'm like, yeah, but we've never done this before. We, we were totally done because I even had one of our staff say, I don't, I don't want to be here all night. <laughs> and we got it done. It was great. Some of those meals have gone to care and share, so they'll stay right here in our community. Some went across the river to food banks over in Omaha. But those all stayed locally, 5,000 meals. So I know many of you gave time. Many of you gave money. Thank you so much for all the gifts and support that you gave to that because we are doing more and more ministry all the time. Okay, that's all that I have. So let's take a deep breath. As we center ourselves, our opening hymn, oh, opening prayer first, sorry. We have an opening prayer first. So let's take a deep breath and do our opening prayer. Or our opening song. <laughs> let's go ahead and sing. Gary, it's all you. Sorry, I forget it's a different service than first service. I apologize. Jump, jump in the river. Jump, jump, 
jump, jump in the river. Goes to the left, then we we'll go to the left, then we we'll go to the right, then we we'll go to the right. We're gonna dance, 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 dance in the river. Dance, 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 dance in the river. Goes to the left, then we go to the left, then we go to the right, then we go to the right. We're gonna shout, 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 shout in the river. Shout, shout. Shout, shout in the river. Oh, deep cries out, deep cries out, deep cries out. We cry out, we cry out to you, Jesus. Deep cries out, deep cries out, deep cries out, deep cries out. We cry out, we cry out to you, Jesus. Thank you. That was my first try. You did great. It's one of my favorite songs. So I had to move down there so I could dance and jump. All right. Miss Carrie, you have the children's sermon. Would the kids please come up? And Miss Carrie has a fun one. Do you have enough candy? Huh? Do you have enough candy for all these oh. kids? Yeah. There's all kinds of kids. I got all kinds of candy. Hi. Hi. Do you want to sit over here? I saw the sugar high from the cookies. I gave you four M&Ms. <laughs> Hi. There you are. Hey, CJ. How are you all? Good. Whoops, sorry. How are you? Good. What you got? Ooh, looks like a puzzle. Is it a puzzle? Okay, cool. That's pretty cool. How's it going? Doing okay? Yeah? Okay. All right, so I thought we'd do something kind of fun today that involves M&Ms, because who doesn't like M&Ms? Well, I know you do, silly. Do you like M&M's? Do you like M&M's? Do you like M&M's? Are you good? Yeah. You ready for some M&M's? Well, what about chocolate? <gasps> you don't, you do you like them? Okay, okay. Whew. I thought we were going to have to revamp our children's message here. So, I thought we'd just do something fun today. Yeah, I don't have lotion. Okay, maybe. There we go. Whew, I couldn't get it open for service. <laughs> it's childproof. So I'm going to give you a different colored M&M. Let's start with brown. Can't eat it. Brown for you. Brown for you. And brown for you. And... Oh, you can't eat it. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> It's okay, honey, you can eat it. Here, I'll give you another one. There you go. Don't eat that one yet. Okay, so here's what I want to ask you. This is what is going to be involved with this brown M&M. You have to tell me, let me think. we we'll try to do something different from first service. Tell me one thing, and it can be anything, that you are thankful for. So one thing, think about it for a second, that you are thankful for. And then if you want to share it, you can share it with me. Okay? Can you think of something? You got something in your head? What, do you, what are you thankful for? A dog. Your dog? Ooh, I love dogs. What are you thankful for, CJ? My mom. Your mom. Aww. What are you thankful for, Serenity? My parents. Your parents? Good. My dad. Your dad. And what are you thankful for? Our church. Our church. Oh, okay. Now you can share them. There you go. Got it? Okay. Now, we're going to do yellow. Yellow for you. 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 Okay, this one's going to be a little bit harder this time, okay? So I want you to think of something that you are thankful for, but it has to start with the first letter of your name. That's a little bit harder, huh? Think of something that you're grateful for, the first letter of your name. Yeah, your first letter is C. Me too. Hmm. Yep, a J. Yep, CJ. Can you think of something that starts with, you, you already have yours? What is it? My dog. Your dog? Oh, that's cheating. <laughs> okay, can you think of something that starts with the first letter of your name that you're thankful for? Um, C. Yep, it's a C. 
Can you think of something that starts with the letter C? D. Um, do you have a cat? No. Well, well, we do see him when it's rain. Oh, okay. Um, think about that. Okay. What? Do you have something? What starts with an S for you? <laughs> you look like a deer in the headlights. What about you? Can you think of something with the letter M? Mom. Your mom. Okay. Can you think of something with the letter S? Socks. <laughs> well, for a person who's always cold, that's probably good. That's probably perfect. You can get it. Your sweatshirt. What? A sweater. A sweater. Are you great? Thankful for sweaters. Are you somebody that's always cold too? You need to sit closer to Shannon. <laughs> Um, ooh, what, ooh, C's kind of hard. I'm not thankful for cows. I mean, I like milk and everything, but, oh, duh, coffee. Hello. Why did I not think of that? Okay, let's do one more, and then we'll wrap it up here. You can eat it. Yep, eat your, eat your yellow M&M. Let's do my favorite color, blue. Blue for you. Blue for you. Blue and orange, those are good colors. Here, honey. All right, so let's think of, um, how about if you think of a place that you were thankful for? And it could start with any letter this time. What you got? My house. Your house, me too. That's what I said that once, my church. Church, very good. And Shannon, what are you thankful for? She stole your answer, okay. You need to come back? Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut? <laughs> <laughs> she is a pizza, a pizza lover. Can you think of something that you're thankful for? My mom. Your mom? Awesome. Museum. Museum. Oh, like the children's museum? Is that what? Oh, that's a really cool place. That's a good one. No one has said that one before. Okay, you can eat your m &M. But I just thought we'd do something kind of fun today because sometimes we do kind of more serious, in-depth things, and this was just kind of lighthearted, and I'm taking the M&Ms downstairs with us, so we might have a few more, okay? All right, let's do an echo prayer, and then we'll go downstairs for Sunday school, okay? Are you praying for us? Okay, nice and loud, okay? Dear God, Dear God thank you for this day. Thank you for this day. Thank you for God. Thank you for God. And for our people. And for our people. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Between the donuts and the M&Ms, you'll have them all sugared up. And then they said, then she sends them back with you guys. Aren't you excited? <laughs> it's time for our offering. If our ushers would come forward, um, we just, you know, we've talked about some of the awesome things we do, like our Kids Against Hunger event. We do many, many more things, and your gifts, your presence, your witness all support that. So there'll be on the screen several ways to give. You can give in person here today with our ushers. You can give online, or you can text to give. But we thank you for our gifts, and thank you for the ministry that support Broadway. What a friend we have in sins and grief to bear what a privilege to carry everything in God in prayer oh what peace we have been forfeit oh Needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. We have trials and temptations. Is there trouble?
find a friend so faithful who with all our sorrows share. Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Now we come to the time in our service where we share our prayers, our concerns. Um, you could do that through the offering. You can just lift them up silently during our silent prayer. But um, Ray Davis has shared that his brother is having an ablation this week. So let's keep Ray and his brother and their family in our prayers. And again, anything else on your hearts and our minds. We'll do a silent prayer. I'll bring us together for prayer, and then we'll all come together for the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray this morning. God, we come to you this morning just grateful. Grateful that we can come to this place where we, we feel safe, God. We feel safe from persecution. We can come and share our thoughts, our concerns, our hopes, our joys with our friends, with our family. And we know we have a lot to be grateful for, God. We have so much to be grateful for. And sometimes we take many of those things for granted. But we thank you, God, for the people you put in our lives, for the things you put in our lives. Help us to share our gifts, our resources with those who need it most and to better your kingdom, God. And as we come to you today, we also come with concerns on our minds, God. Ones we mentioned in writing, ones that are on our hearts and minds that we weren't quite ready to mention, God. We have people who are hurting, people who are sick. Wrap them in your loving arms and be the great physician that we know you are, God. But there are other hurts too, God. Hurts that can't be fixed with a shot or with medicine. Spiritual hurts. Things that you don't see when you look at somebody, God. Wrap those people in your loving arms. And while we know we have much to be grateful for, we come with concerns, God. It's a crazy, messed up world that we live in. Where we see school shootings and People hurt physically or mentally or socially on a daily basis, God. And we try to help the best we can, and sometimes we just don't know what else to do. As we come to you with all these thoughts and all these things, we also know, God, that you're in charge, that we know the outcome, and that the good guy really does win. Help us to keep the faith to do what we can. Bless and protect those people, God who keep us safe. Bless and protect our servicemen and women, our police, our firefighters, our nurses and doctors, all those people who worry about our safety and our health. And bless and protect our leaders, God, of our church and our communities, of our state and our nation. We don't always agree with them, and, and sometimes we don't ever agree with them, God, but they're still your children. So help them, lead them, guide them that they may do your will and not their own, that they might glorify you in all that they do, God. Because we know we don't always do what we're supposed to. We know that we try. We try to follow you. But sometimes it just, well, we, we get in our own way, God. We go our own path. We do what we want or what we think we need to do. We forget to talk to you about it. Help us to follow you. Help us to follow where you lead us, God that we might bring a little piece of heaven to earth, or maybe a big piece of heaven to earth, God. We ask all these things as we pray the prayer that you taught us when we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You want them standing or sitting for the centering song? As you see fit, you may stand if you feel moved, or you may sit if you want a break. It's okay. For our centering song, note the goodness of God. goodness of God. Let's pray. God, help us. Help us to hear the words that you give us today, God. Help us that they're your words and not my words. Help us, help them to move us to action, God. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Our scripture this morning is from Matthew 9, 
18 through 26, and we're reading from the New Revised Standard Version, so it's the same version as in your pews and on the screen. Matthew 9, 18 through 26 says, While he was saying these things to, him, to them, suddenly a leader of the synagogue came in and knelt before him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. And Jesus got up and followed him with his disciples. Then suddenly a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak. For she said to herself, If I only touch his cloak, I will be made well. Jesus turned, and seeing her, he said, Take heart, daughter. Your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. When Jesus came to the leader's house and saw the flute players and the crowd making a commotion, he said, go away, for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl got up. And the report of this spread throughout that district. Here ends the reading. Spirit of God, stir up your people. Amen. So we're on week four of studying Signs and, uh, Signs and Wonders by Amy Jo Levine, or AJ, as Alexis has been commonly referring to her. This week is about two females who were healed. Now, a couple things come to mind first and foremost as we read our scripture this morning. You know, I think sometimes we read the miracles of Jesus and go, oh yeah, that's another one he healed, another miracle he performed. And I think we read the story so often that they become just that, stories, tales, legends, right? We forget how miraculous they truly are, and we forget to really look at the details that are in these stories. The opening lines of this chapter, for instance, start with Jesus following the synagogue ruler named Jairus. Now, Matthew that we read today doesn't actually give us the ruler's name because, well, that's just Matthew, and that's how Matthew writes. Matthew doesn't give us a ton of details about anything, especially the lesser characters. He mostly just focuses on the miracles of Jesus and usually makes the miracles really miraculous. For instance, where we find the same story in Mark, in chapter 5, verses 21 through 43, Jairus' daughter isn't actually dead, she's just dying. But Matthew makes sure Jesus' miracles are really, really big. So she's not just dying, she's dead, and Jesus has to raise her, right? While Mark's miracles aren't as big and miraculous, he tends to give more detail in his stories. It's, uh, it's not just a quick matter of fact like Matthew. Mark tells us more. He sets the scene. He gives character names. Mark is a true storyteller. And being the child of an English teacher, I think that Mark would have done really well in his creative writing class, and Matthew probably wouldn't have. Matthew's stories are almost choppy at times, honestly. And we'll see some instances of how this play out in our story today. Now, just a fun fact and kind of a side note. While Mark's gospel is actually shorter than Matthew's, Mark's stories are longer because of the detail he gives. Personally, I like the details. I don't know about you. Maybe you all just want the facts, and that's okay too. But the miracles are great and all, in my opinion. But I find it's more relatable when we have the whole backstory. But anyway, let's go back to Jesus following this synagogue leader named Jairus, all right? Now let that sink in for a moment. Jesus followed Jairus. When in the four books of the gospel do you remember Jesus following anyone? I mean, this is the same boy who hung out in the temple for a couple of days while his parents frantically searched for him, scared to death they'd lost the Son of God, remember? Jesus doesn't follow anybody except God. And yet here he is following Jairus, first thing in our story this morning. The only conclusion I draw from that is that Jesus must have felt wherever Jairus was going was pretty important. I can't recall any other story in the Bible where Jesus follows anybody. Can you all? People follow Jesus, right? Not the other way around. But on the way to see or heal or raise Jairus' dead daughter, depending on the version of the story you read, a woman touches Jesus. Now this also makes me wonder, right? How often do we get interrupted when we're on the way to do something? Or how often do we interrupt ourselves, right? You walk into a room and you go, what did I come in here for? 
I know, because we've all done it, right? Sometimes I even, you know, I sit down and I'm trying to compose a really good professional email and my phone rings or vibrates or buzzes or anything happens, right? All kinds of interruptions. We get interrupted on a daily basis, right? Sometimes I think I'm ADHD, even though I've never been diagnosed. It's really easy to just squirrel, right? How do we know if and when the interruption is more important than what we're doing, right? That's what, like, that's what holds us. Maybe it's more important. I got to fix it right now. How do we prioritize? And how often, more importantly, do we miss miracles because we simply get too distracted or forget to look? And in our story this morning, poor Jairus is waiting for his daughter to be healed, and he has to tolerate this untimely interruption of this woman touching Jesus. So this woman who touched Jesus has been bleeding or hemorrhaging for 12 years. Now again, in today's scripture from Matthew, the story is short and sweet. A woman touched Jesus' robe or hem or fringe, again, depending on the translation you use. And that's pretty much what you get. Mark, however, sets the scene, gives us more detail. Mark tells us that a swarm of people were crowding Jesus and pushing in on Jesus. And this woman not only touched Jesus, but he sh again, he, Mark gives us the backstory. The woman had suffered under the care of a lot of doctors. She'd actually spent everything she had to try and get better and she actually got worse. Gives us a little more insight into the woman, doesn't it? It gives us more compassion for her because we better understand what she's been through. So let's talk about this woman because I'm not really sure we talk about her much. I mean, if we're being honest, blood can make us a little squeamish, right? It's not something we come up in our daily conversation. And again, if we're being honest, the subject of her health problem is a little taboo. So I don't think we necessarily talk about this woman as much as we maybe should. I am guessing, however, that we've heard stories about the hemorrhaging woman. We've heard that she's unclean. We've heard that she's shamed because of her health problem, that she maybe doesn't have any friends because of what she's suffering, and that she's uh, uh, um, ostracized by society because she's ritually unpure, right? You've heard the stories, whether we want to admit it or not. Even though we don't want to talk about her, we kind of have like the parking lot conversations about her, right? AJ, however, gives us another perspective on this woman. She says that most people are ritually unpure most of the time, and most people just don't care. It's an interesting perspective, isn't it? I had no idea. Giving birth, for example, she says, makes women ritually unpure. But I'm guessing that's not the focus of their thought process when they're holding this new baby boy or girl who's happy and healthy and laughing or crying and eating, right? So the bleeding woman's problem isn't that she's ritually impure, it's that she's sick. And according to Mark, she's basically tried everything to get healthy and used most of her money to do so, only to get sicker. So she's sick, really sick, and she's poor because she's sick, right? Her sickness has made her poor. AJ also says the fact that she had visited numerous physicians and had spent all she had on them suggests she was actually out in public quite a bit. She was proactive and not shamed. She maybe even had a group of friends and family to support her and love her, similar to our paralyzed man who had his, his friends lower him through the roof a few weeks ago that we studied, right? So she's probably annoyed and frustrated. She's probably tired and in pain maybe even depressed and despairing. But there's nothing to say she's ostracized or shamed. Throughout this whole struggle of 12 years, the woman has had courage to demand better health care for herself. She kept looking for solutions and had faith in Jesus when her faith in all the other medicines and doctors and cures had failed miserably. So let me ask you this morning, church, have you been there? Have you had to advocate for yourself or a family member who couldn't quite figure out what was wrong with him or her, who couldn't quite seem to get better no matter what? Maybe it was you. Maybe it was somebody you loved and cared about deeply. I've been there. I've had to advocate for myself and for others who I loved. And it's exhausting. It's frustrating. It's time-consuming. 
And it is hard to focus on things like a job or family or what you're fixing for dinner when someone you love is sick. When you or someone you love isn't being listened to or tended to properly or treated in the way that they need. I'm guessing many of you have been in that same position, in those same shoes at one point or another. Which brings me to something else that needs to be mentioned this morning. It's honestly not something I was aware of until I read this chapter and did some research on it. Did you know that even in today's world, there is a gender bias in the medical world? Did you know that women are often dismissed or not taken as seriously as men when it comes to health care? I'd like to think it's not true, right? I'm a millennial. I like to think we try really hard to make everything equal. But a quick Google search revealed numerous credible sources from the Washington Post, Today, Duke, Harvard, WebMD, Time, US News and World Health, NPR, and many, many others, stating that women are often dismissed for their pain and their symptoms. And it actually even talks about how in the emergency room, men get painkillers way quicker than women do when they go into the ER. I had no idea. And all these articles that I looked up j just come up on the first page of a Google search are from 2019 to 2023. These aren't a decade or two old articles. They're not antiquated. They're what's happening now in our world and in our nation. Women are not listened to as well by their doctors. And things like heart disease aren't caught as easily with women because their symptoms aren't the same as men's. Headlines like, why won't doctors believe women? Doctors are failing women with chronic illness, and doctors are more likely to misdiagnose women than men. Seriously, y'all, if it's this difficult for a woman to get treated in 2023, think what it must have been like for our hemorrhaging women to, woman to get treated 2,000 years ago. And yet, over 2,000 years ago, Jesus believed that this woman's needs were just as important as the synagogue ruler. So Jesus stopped. He wouldn't have had to stop, right? He could have just kept on going, even knowing somebody had touched him and something had changed. <laughs> That's not who Jesus is, right? We know this. So Jesus stopped. And he said to the woman, take heart. Now, I don't know about all you, but I don't think I've ever used the phrase take heart in my life. So AJ tells us that this is more like have courage, be confident, right? But let's be honest. After being sick with the same illness for 12 years, she probably had neither confidence or courage. Mark actually tells us in his more detailed story that the woman was basically terrified when she confronted Jesus. She came to Jesus trembling. She was probably just desperate, right? But she did know enough to keep fighting and keep advocating for herself. And then Jesus takes time to make sure that she knows she's not only healed, but that she's whole again. Because again, that's what Jesus does and who Jesus is, right? He restores people so they can feel and be completely whole again. And again, depending on the version you read, Jesus either had a really quick word with her or a lengthy conversation, as, Matthew portray, or as Mark portrays. But either way, at some point, Jesus continues on his journey to Jairus' house amidst this interruption of this woman being healed. And he goes on to heal or raise Jairus' daughter. He restores the daughter to health and brings her back to life also. You see, the dead girl had her father to advocate for her. And the bleeding woman, I really wish we had a name for her, right? We should have just called her Betty or something. I don't know. The bleeding woman advocated for herself. Which comes us to the questions that we really need to ask today. What do these stories teach us? And how can we relate them to our lives? What do we do with these stories of the two women who were healed? I think they teach us first and foremost that Jesus cared about health care, right? It was a passion of his. And not just health care for one sex or one gender or anything. He cared about health care for everybody. Every individual. He not only healed these individuals, but he took time with them. He listened to their experiences and he heard their stories. I think that we can learn no matter what 
our status, no matter what our history, it's okay to admit if and when we have a problem, if and when we have struggles. It's okay to not go it alone. I mean, let's be real. If we've learned anything from the COVID-19 pandemic, it's that we're made for community, right? And we function better when we have community. So we need to ask for help and ensure we are truly heard when it comes to our health. Sometimes that means asking and telling our story repeatedly. And when we see that others are not being heard, we need to help them. We need to fight for them and advocate for them, even when it's exhausting, even when it's frustrating and painstakingly slow. We need to take time with people, as Jesus did, because every child of God needs to have their pain, their illness acknowledged rather than dismissed. Now remember, as we've gone through these stories, we've learned several things. We know these stories aren't necessarily about the miracles, but about the faithfulness. And for miracles to work, they should change those who not only receive them, but those who are affected by them at whatever inopportune time they may occur with, with whatever interruption, right? And while calling on God is good and important to have him save us, we can't shirk our own responsibilities in the miracle process. We must stand up for ourselves and others. We need to have the courage that we are children of God. And sometimes it's in the listening and the advocating and the being there for each other, fighting for our brothers and sisters in Christ, that the earthly miracle occurs that our wholeness is restored on this earth. And with the confidence of God's children, we need to remember that one day we will truly and fully be restored after this life. Amen. We're going to respond to the word with our Nicene Creed this morning. It's printed on the screens or in your hymnals on page 880. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the one holy and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And will you stand for our final song, Give Me Jesus.
am alone when I am alone when I am alone give me Jesus give me Jesus give me Jesus to die when I come to die when I come to die give me Jesus give me Jesus give me Jesus Beloved, go this morning with the confidence of children to advocate for yourselves and others. Go be a catalyst for miracles. Amen. <laughs>